from an undisclosed location high in the Hollywood Hills, it's time once again for the long shot. Come hell or high water, tonight's episode. Why are we going to Culver City? And now, please welcome the host of the long shot, Sean Conroy. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Good desk. Welcome to The Long Shot. It's another Rambling with Sean and Amber episode. And uh, Joe is, of course, not here. Jamie, of course, is not here. It's just Amber and myself. The hardcore crew. The end of the night. The you can't. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here, crew. <laughs> Uh, it's time once again for the long shot. Yes, I'm Sean Conroy. I'm your host. With me on the show today, as always, is Amber Kenny. Amber, Hello. how are you? I'm good. How was last week with you and Jamie? Uh, it was good. It was good. It was. Yeah, I've heard uh, good things. <laughs> the word on the street <laughs> <laughs> when you were. I'm just picturing you getting your shoes shined, and like, the shoe hey, shine guy is like, "Say, Amber, I know you're part of the long shot, but just so you know, you weren't missed last week. They had a great conversation, Sean and Jamie." <laughs> <laughs> or I just overhear a conversation, and while I'm getting my shoe shine, I have a newspaper up, and I go, <laughs> "It was weird, but it was okay." <laughs> um. No, it was fine. It was, you know, uh, uh, Jamie had no choice but to respond. Vicky was there for a moment. Oh, fun. Uh, yeah. And uh, we talked about a lot of things. I know I did not. By the way, I am aware that I am falling behind in my putting together the, the episode notes for the episode. But I do mm -hmm. have a draft that I have yet to publish. But I will. And I know people are dying to get that. I can tell because everybody immediately goes to check and see what the what the notes are. Um, no one cares. Uh, people care. They do. They do. They love the notes. They love. They the love notes. it. They love the notes. <laughs> they love the notes. Who doesn't love notes? Uh, all right. Well, let's start with the segment we always like to do at the beginning of the show, which is like me and you catching up. What's going on? Just renaming every part. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, is it my go. turn? <laughs> or do you want to go? Uh, let's go? I just like doing this like it's the most awkward conversation. Right, right, right. Well, this is how it is when we meet up in real life, if I <laughs> even remember that. But yeah, it's always so awkward between us. But uh, why don't we go back and forth? So you go first, and then okay. I'll go, and then you okay. go. And maybe and we'll go we back can and... respond between them. Like if I, I can have say an, like, things about what you have yeah, to like say. Ask and ask a question yeah. or, or. You mean you're saying make it like a conversation, like we'll a see. conversational we'll podcast, <laughs> like a podcast where they have a conversation? 11 years later. Yeah. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. Um, okay. When you say, um, that makes me think, oh, am I doing it too soon? Too oh. soon. <laughs> right. Yes. That's, that's probably too soon of a jump fan, but, um, I, I, I should wait till you actually have a subject. Love the enthusiasm. Like Thank big you. fan, keep the energy. I'll give it a shot. We'll see. <laughs> I, so I was gone last week and I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not that sorry. Of course not. You should be out doing things <laughs> with people. I um, it was my very good friend Whitney's birthday, and I she, don't know who that is. Yes, you do. <laughs> this weird gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> it's the country we live in now. Yeah, um, I have no idea. I have no idea who Whitney is. I, and I couldn't guess. And there's no way to know. No. Um, she, it was her birthday. And so she, I think, I don't remember if I've even said any of this. And I apologize if I'm being redundant. But um, she had a baby in December. So like, and there was a pandemic or is a pandemic. I don't know. If Scorpio. You, Scorpio, right? Uh, no. Gemini? No. <laughs> Delta. It, it's either Delta? it's either Sagittarius or Capricorn, depending. On I what this is I, I I should clarify. That's one of my favorite things is to just randomly <laughs> pick 
pick a sign as if I know what I'm, I definitely don't have any idea what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. but I love saying it with full confidence when somebody goes, I had a baby in, in August. Oh, yeah. interesting <laughs> answer. No, 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 not a cancer. Um, um, I have a question for you and I'm almost positive. I will know the answer, mm -hmm. but do you know your sun, moon and rising signs? Sun, moon, when you started that sentence, by the way, can I say, I thought you were going to, I thought, I thought it was going to go in a different direction. I thought it was going to be like, do you know your son is still alive and is trying to find you? And I was going to be like, what? No, uh, sun, sun, moon, and rising signs. I don't. Okay. Is that what you would have guessed? Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I will say at one point there was a comic in New York that I really liked who is now married to another comic that I really like, and I won't say either of their names. They, I believe they were high school sweethearts and then oh were not gosh. together for a long time and then ended up getting married. That's cute. I don't yeah. like high school sweethearts that get married right after high school. Like, no, me, that is so that fucked cute. up. Yes. That is no, gross. Not truly. Like it's, it's <laughs> no, but I mean, sample the fruit. A little, Get out there. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I do like the coming back stories. I think right. that is cute. Except for the part of that story that's like, we should have stayed together. We wasted oh, right. so much time. I have no idea if anybody ever feels that way. But she was a really funny comic whose work I really enjoyed, but also really into astrology. Uh-huh. And I met her at a coffee shop once, and she read my charts and it was insane. Like it was so detailed and there was like chart. Literally, she had like all these things uh -huh. laid out and was like, OK, it was this day and this thing was over here and this uh -huh. is what the sky looked like and whatever. So, you know, that was probably 20 years ago and I have no recollection, but I'm guessing she probably told me all the I'm, things you just I'm asked positive. me and Those I don't remember what they were. Yeah. You probably know your sun sign. Your sun sign is. Up. Sun was <laughs> so up. That's like the one that people know. Like that's the one when you say what's your sign. It oh, okay. Yes. I do know that then. I know, I know that, and I always don't like to say this because it 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 begs for a wise ass response. Cancer. I am a cancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. <laughs> we knew that. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I did a fake uh, uh, single video years ago, and that was one of the like single like um, dating video. Like I'm okay, I was like dates. <laughs> single video. <laughs> I did a single. It was a single that came out. Uh, no, it was a dating video. Like as if I was being mm -hmm. interviewed by somebody. And one of the right. jokes, I just did it in my kitchen by myself. And one of the jokes was, I say something along the lines of like. Um, I am a cancer. And by the way, if you have signs of cancer, you should get that checked out because who knows where that could go. And then it was like the next <laughs> thing. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I do know my sun sign. Moon sign, I don't know. And rising, forget mm -hmm. it. Okay. Well, Unless, well, well, are they both the same? Is it bad moon on the rise? <laughs> no? I mean, they could be the same, but they okay. probably aren't. So anyway, you're at Whitney's, you're with the baby. <laughs> no, I, so she had a baby in December. There mm -hmm. was a pandemic. She's she's moved. She lives in Laguna now. Right. So there was a, a lot, and she was craving some time with... I believe Tony. Laguna uh -huh. is Tony. It is. <laughs> it is Tony. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's pretty Tony. Yeah. <laughs> um. So she was craving just like getting adult girlfriends together, not being just. I know that feeling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she gathered us. I think there was eight of us total. And um, we were there only 24 hours, but um, she rented like a, day. a big. <laughs> okay. You're good. <laughs> what was the sun sign? <laughs> well, she's a Gemini. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, yeah, we we were in like a hotel suite, but it was right on the beach. So we got there. We just 
hung out at the beach and had drinks and um what were you guys wearing bathing suits <laughs> go on okay joe isn't here <laughs> <laughs> exactly what i was thinking i was like i gotta i gotta fill in for joe we need to add some spice (laughs) any bikinis there were some bikinis nice nice but it was really really fun i um just like i've said on every podcast i was nervous beforehand i didn't know if i was gonna get overwhelmed or freaked out because you haven't been around a lot of people Yeah, yeah but it was it was absolutely wonderful um and you know just yeah, how, how long did it take for it to be wonderful in other words like was there an initial hesitation or was it just like oh it's you guys i'm in well it was nice because we had uh segments to the trip because getting down to laguna takes a while mm-hmm. and so Barbara, Lampy, Tess, and myself decided to drive together. And that was also a whole big thing. Like, that's my first time in a car with anyone besides Jeff in a year and a half. You were not Um, driving, I assume. I was not driving. (laughs) I was very excited about this development, to be (laughs) quite honest. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. (laughs) I mean, it's mixed. I have mixed feelings. But yes, I don't have. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Um, So we got to, like... Barbara came and picked me up first. So Barbara and I got to kind of like right. acclimate and then we picked up Lampy and then we got to acclimate as a threesome and then Tess showed up. And so like, that's what I mean. Like we, it, I think it would have been harder for me if I just if, dove into the If you were fourth. Table. Yeah. If you were, if you were in Tess's spot, it would have been a pain. Right. Yes. Yeah. Or just because also some of Whitney's friends aren't my best friends weirdly right. enough oh right so because it was these friend. three yeah. yes mm-hmm. so like and we showed up as like we got to really catch up in that long drive too right. so we felt so then you could integrate into a larger group mm-hmm. without feeling like ah, oh, why am i not talking to this person who's right. my good friend when right, i'm right, talking right. to this person and, and without having to be like so how is insert right. big life event here like we kind of did that for the most part right. without Whitney sorry Whitney <laughs> I don't even know who that is <laughs> but yeah we were just on the beach and um she it was really cute she ordered a bunch of pizzas we had for dinner and she had a ceremony planned and that is not normally her thing mm-hmm. um but she really wanted to mark sort of thanksgiving no, <laughs> the, 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 the post COVID, even though right. it isn't true post COVID, mm-hmm. it truly isn't. Who the fuck knows what it is. Yeah. But, um, just sort of like we had to all write down something that we want to leave behind in 2020 and with COVID. And then, um, we, we wrote it and we all expressed it out loud. And that was actually really beautiful because we all had very similar vulnerable things but it wasn't a conversation that would have organically come up and we wouldn't have bonded over that you know like um right. I it's not like my- you would have yeah it's not like you would have been like uh you know what i was thinking about here's the thing i'd like to leave behind in 2020 but doing exactly. something like that forces you to think about that and and also see like oh everyone is going through a very yeah. similar thing as me and then we tied it to um a piece of sage that one of the girls grew in her backyard. And then we had to write down things we wanted to bring with us, like a, a lesson learned, a, a positive. And we made bracelets that sort of represented that. And we got to keep that. And then we all went down to the beach and burned the sage in a bowl. And it was beautiful. It I was hope really- nobody mixed up the sage and the bracelet. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and, uh, and then we went to like a bar, like, like capital B underlined. Like we didn't ease into this one at all. Like people dancing, sweaty, mm-hmm. dirty. Just open, no rules, no regulations. No rules, no regulations, no masks. Because mm-hmm. it's Orange County. I think they yeah, were. Yeah, they never had or, masks. Or if they did, they didn't. Right. Uh, 
So that was intense. And it was like fun to be dancing, but I could see some of us were like, this is too much. And so a few of us were like, we're going to walk back to the hotel. And I in was a, part in of a her. conga line, but yes, we are going to yeah. walk back. Um, dun, 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 dun. Bum, ba, ba, da, bum, ba. Yeah. And then the next morning, you know, we had brunch and um, spent some more time at the beach and then went home. Like it, it really was a very, I keep saying 24 hours and not a day because it was, we got there between traffic and stuff at like 4.30 mm-hmm. and we probably left the beach the next day at 4.29. Like it, guess, it, was, right? it, was, it was like less than 24 hours, but we, we had, um, we crammed so much into it, mm-hmm. but at, at a not, it wasn't a stressful, like we're doing too much pace. Like, so it felt like a full vacation is what I'm saying. I came back feeling very, um, I filled my tanks. I feel right. it, it was nice to, I didn't even know you had more than one tank. I know. I know. Uh, it was nice to, um, you know, spend some time away from this house, quite yeah. honestly. I know I've been doing it for a while now and uh, it's been great. I got to get back there at some point from this house. Yeah. You've never been here. <laughs> it's true. That makes it even weirder. <laughs> but that's uh, where I was last Saturday. And I uh-huh. actually did get home in time to make it to the recording. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm being too honest, but I, I basically didn't sleep that night because i was having too much i was gonna say if you're only there for 24 hours and you're with you know some of your best friends it was like a sleepover yeah yeah. (laughs) so um i was like i don't think i'm gonna bring much to this recording anyway so we we handled it we handled our business Yeah, the boys yeah hey jamie what's going on buddy hey sports am i right i think you guys did talk about sports though from what we did we did (laughs) about basketball all right jamie you get any pussy these days huh oh boy (laughs) Okay, Joe. <laughs> uh, no, I get it. I get it, a hundred percent. And uh, yeah, it was just it was it was it was really fun. It, <laughs> I liked my friends. Turns out, <laughs> like, it's nice to have things begin to be normal again. Yeah. To see people and spend time with people, or that's what I've heard. I haven't actually done it but you've done a, a little bit i've heard of some a little bit a little bit not much not much um i had a meeting this week it was my first in-person meeting like business in, meeting not business not meeting. pleasure <laughs> no pleasure is my business if you have ever seen my stand-up act um but yeah, it was like, it was, you know, just a, a show that I've been trying to get going. And I sent some stuff to a producer that I've worked with who really liked it, but wanted to see a script. So I sent him a script. This is a thing that I've been working on with a couple of other people. It's really their thing that I have sort of been shepherding with mm-hmm. them. Um, so they wrote the script. Uh But it was just funny because, I mean, there was a lot of things about it that were funny. One being that the meeting was in Culver City. You never want to go to Culver City. It was bizarre. It's a fun mall. (laughs) Well, I don't know because I've never been to the Culver City Mall. Oh, you got to go. You simply must. (laughs) I love malls. You know me. Um, Window shopping is my my jam mm-hmm. uh and shopping shopping am shopping I right? shopping too <laughs> well i mean i do need new windows so that's what i mean when i say <laughs> shopping shopping i mean window shopping but do you have anything more glazed <laughs> um no sir we're not a donut shop oh god um <laughs> wow. i know you have this, is, this is what you missed last week yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the boys donut jokes uh <laughs> But anyway, I was like, oh, Jesus, Culver City. Come on. Why are we going to Culver City? So we get there and I'm like, I guess you must live around here. And he's like, oh, no, I live on the other side of Pasadena. (laughs) Like it could not have been farther away from both of us. Why? he, He was like, I don't know why my assistant set it up here. I think she just 
thinks it's a good restaurant. Well, that's like where business happens. I don't know. Like, and it was good. It was good. It was good. What, you know? what was the place? It was called Roberta's and it's like, pe- you know, individual pizzas. And it was, mm. it was really good. Although the guy, th- there's so many things about this. Like he, he was like, this place is great. It's one of my favorites. The pizza here is so good. Oh, by the way, I'm on a juice fast. So I can't even. It's like, we could have had a phone call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, you it was hilarious. And also because to have a juice. Yeah. Well, except he was drinking alcohol during lunch too, which was hilarious to me. Cause I was like, I guess that's juice, right? Uh, it feels like an eating disorder. <laughs> but, we're but also, and pretending. then because he was on a juice fast, that meant that he had to pee every five minutes mm. and you know, the whole thing was just hilarious, but what the the reason for the meeting really was you know i really like this stuff i just don't know if i can sell it mm. so convince me that i can sell it is there some place i can go so i sat down with these other guys and we did a whole breakdown of all the networks and the shows that are on the the demographic and it was like oh this network would work this network would not work so i was going to go in i was going to go through the networks and go this network has this this and this show this network has this this and this show this you know these are all good places which feels like not your job it feels like their job of course but (laughs) but right no you're a hundred percent correct but that's that's one of the things that's so funny about it is like everybody just wants you to spoon feed mm. them. And there's no imagination at all. Of, yeah. yeah. Well, like if this show doesn't already exist, then how could it exist? It's like, <laughs> right. Because we want to make it. <laughs> they don't have this show. Right. Or anything exactly. like it. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> It's like, yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. No, but you're so right that that is literally the job of the producer to go, where can I take this and right. have it sell? And this person didn't even want to do that part of the job. And so we, as creative people, found ourselves going. Making up a deck of like. Not not even a deck. Like I literally had like a scrap of paper with all sorts of (laughs) grids on it. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) This, this, and like, (laughs) I'm so, I'm so bad at that stuff and disorganized that it was like carrots everywhere with things inserted right. in between right. and like, like oh, don't forget to mention this, this. One, yeah but- yeah <laughs> and literally like crumpled up in my pocket so at some point during like the lunch sweaty. i like took it out and unfolded it <laughs> <laughs> which is not how to impress people but what was hilarious about all of that does this sound okay because i feel like i'm it does sound good okay um what was hilarious about all of that is i it got to that point in the meeting. Like we, you know, these meetings are always like, you have to like say hello and what's going on and reconnect and talk about the pandemic. And Oh, my <laughs> friend Whitney had a baby in December and you know, all this stuff. Are we having a meeting right now? <laughs> <laughs> Who's pitching? <laughs> <laughs> and so it gets to the point where I'm like, going to bust out the research, the big guns. Mm. Cause not only did we do that, but we also were like, let's go in loaded for bear and just go, these are the pieces of the show that we would pitch to these networks and this say, how we would sell it to here's them. the script. Here's Again, the I idea. Feel like yeah. That's their job, but okay. <laughs> so I go, let's say the first network was, I don't know, pick a network, pick any network. Showtime. Okay. So let's say the first network was Showtime that I was going to talk about how we could sell it there. What's weird is it totally was Showtime. No, it wasn't. Showtime tonight. I'm, I'm kidding. It was. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> nobody has any idea now. Uh, it wasn't. Um, maybe. Um, Week. <laughs> but so, so I go, I go, well, I would start with Showtime. And, you know, they have, um, what's that Scottish show about the time travelers or whatever it is? Isn't that on Showtime? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I know what you're talking about, but I don't think so. Right. Like uh, (laughs) Jamie, Jamie, whatever his name is, who's on that show. And anyway, they have that show and and the guy literally I'm that far into the pitch and he just stops me and he goes, 
I just don't think it can work. I just don't, I don't see the show. <laughs> like I'm not, my I, I, yeah. He's like, I, no, 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 not even with like, just in general, he goes, I, he goes, I think if the show was different, if it was this show, then I could see myself selling it somewhere and I think it could work, but it's not that. So, you know, Forget I don't, it. so it was like, just this weird thing where I was then going, why are we even having yeah. this meeting if the decision has already been made? Like, And you're not interested, it sounds it's, like. It, not interested, doesn't believe it could work, thinks if it was literally basically just said, if it was a different idea, I could sell mm-hmm. it. And I'm like. Yeah, again, that feels like an email. That feels like a phone call. Well, and it's also like. Yeah, if it was a different idea, but it's not. It's the idea that I sent and that we worked on. And I don't know that we're interested in making a different idea. This is a thing we've been working on, I would say, for three years at this point. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, you know, obviously there was a whole year in there that was... uh, A pandemic. I don't know if you heard about this pandemic thing. Mm -hmm. Um. But anyway, it was just a weird, like, I just, yeah, I was like, you could have just emailed me and said, I've really thought about it and I'm not interested because it was also not like he was like, I'm going to use this as an excuse to go to my favorite pizza restaurant because he was on a fucking juice fast. So you didn't, was there anything else that came of that meeting? Like, yes, there was, because then I said, well, I did also write this other thing and whatever. And he was like, that sounds great. Send me the script. So no. you're gonna do it all over yeah, exactly but it was also it's a good lesson i think in at least for me i mean I, I really have been thinking about it a lot you know of like what is the point of this like what am i doing this for and i think one of the problems i've had in terms of just comedy in general is that I started as an improviser, which is the most disposable thing in the world. You do it in front of that audience and then it's never seen again. It's not a product that you can- And it shouldn't be. No, and and, you know, we've all had the experience, not all of us, some of us, a few of us, one or two of us, I've had the experience. Two of us on this call have had the experience of going, I saw this improv show. This is what happened. It was so funny. And the other person being like, I don't understand what you're saying. No, because it is one of those things where you do have to be there. You literally have to be to get why it works, to get what was funny about it, to understand it's so of the moment. It's so in the moment. And so that's what comedy always was to me was like, ah, it's just, you know, it's gone. It's, it's, Uh I used to call it throwing diamonds in the ocean. Like when we were doing really good shows in ASCAT, I was like, why are we doing like, whatever it, it it all worked out. But there was a period of time where I was like, these shows are so amazing, but what's the point of any of them, you know? And ultimately the point is to be amazing, but to be completely disposable. And that's kind of a cool thing. If you Mm -hmm. look at it that way, but it's also not a thing that you can look at and go, oh, this is a way to build a career. It's like, what's the thing? So anyway, my like point what is. What skill are you getting from it that you can get a career from? That you can apply long term. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's what I was taking away from this was that it is such a long term thing that you have to be thinking, okay, I went to lunch with this guy and there's no interest from him in this project. But there's a million other people out there who might be interested in it. And it's about finding those people. And, you know, the thing isn't over. It's not dead because this one person said, no, thank you. I'm on a juice fast. It sounds like it's the, and you might be making this exact point, but like the inverse of your experience with improv, where it's like you would create this amazing thing almost instantly. And then it would also, the entire process, like from inception to completion happens that night and it's over. And then this is the exact opposite where it takes a really long time to build something. And then even once it's built, it takes possibly even more time to sell or convince or change. And, and um, 
you're you have a, a muscle built up of like building throwing away building throwing away so is it like your instinct is to throw away a little yeah, bit you have to, to be that? done with it yeah, yeah to be done with it and 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 you know i i think that's been true for me for a long time like i look back at my i mean there's a million reasons for this too and i'm not saying it would have worked but when i did my my one person show that went to the hbo comedy festival about my experience as a teacher you know, I did that show and it went to the HBO comedy festival. And then I was just done with that. Like it was mm. over, it was in the rearview mirror. And if I had taken a step back and said, okay, I can I write a got, book about this. I yeah, I've gotten the heat. Yeah. And I literally had a meeting with somebody who was working at a literary agency who was like, have you thought about writing a book about all like, this? Mm-mm, nah. <laughs> no, not even that. <laughs> I was just like, I, I don't know. Sure. And then that just kind of drifted away because I was done with that project. Mm-hmm. And it takes, I don't know what, determination and like persistence with these things. Well, and also you can't, or you have to fight through kind of getting sick of a project because that's another part of it. Yes. I mean, that is the beauty of improv is that you're doing a new thing every time, but you know, part of the work is to not be doing it for yourself, like not to get self gratification from it, but to, I guess, maybe present it in such a way that other people can be gratified by the work that you're doing even though you're going through it for the millionth time trying right, to. Right. Right. It has to stay new to you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it was just a, it was just a, like it's I said, my LA. first, my first meeting back from the pandemic and it really was a, was a thinker, you know, <laughs> but it sounds like you have a, a positive relationship with this person. Like yeah, they absolutely. Want to keep meeting with you. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I did send, you know, I did send this script that I wrote and I'm quite certain that I will get back the information that it's not that interesting, but that's okay. It's about, it's also about sustaining relationships until something hits, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, so we'll see. And who knows? I could, you know, I could sell the show time, show tomorrow like that's the goal is the showtime thing you know right, right. <laughs> um and i know tomorrow's sunday when we're recording this so you know probably it won't sell tomorrow but things and it's a it's a national holiday today so that's also going to make it that's true tricky. it's june it's juneteenth mm-hmm. juneteenth uh which of course is only being put into place to replace the fourth of july we all know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I do think that's sort of silly, but then I also think about the fact that look what happened uh, when you know uh, they put they put Christmas right next to New Year's and people stopped celebrating New Year's. <laughs> you know? It's true. It's true barely even remember when the new year starts anymore because of Christmas. You're just like, Hey, it's Christmas. And then this other day happens. Well, and then Thanksgiving, forget it. I don't know any of those days. Right. Well, not to mention boxer day. Boxing. Uh, is it boxing day? I thought it was I boxer. Think, I think it's boxing. I'm talking about the dog holiday. Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> uh, what else is going on? Amber. Yeah, a lot. Um, so we had an actual dog trainer come to our house on Tuesday. Not Caesar. Not Caesar. I wish. Oh. But um, <clears throat> there is a lot. <laughs> I could talk about this for so long. And I'm, mm-hmm. um, so the first thing is on weekdays, I don't usually eat until lunch. I just don't. Intermittent fasting? I, I, it started as that, and now it's just habit, because mm-hmm. I don't know if I believe in it. I eat breakfast on the weekends and not on weekdays. It's also Still just intermittent. Like, yes, you're right. It's very inter- intermittent. Um, but I don't. I, what I'm saying is I don't think I'm like, like losing weight because of it. It's, it's right. literally just like now a time thing, right? It's not allotted into my day. Right. Um, 
And so she showed up at 1130. It was supposed to be a 90 minute session. Well, okay. It, it was scheduled for 1130 to one. Right. So I was like, it's going to be. So a 200 minute session. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I'm neither a math expert nor a time expert. <laughs> um, but I was like, I'm going to be a little hungry by the end of this, but I think it's going to be okay. Like, I, I think we'll be okay. And um, she showed up a little bit late. And like 1135 or like 12? 11, 1145. Okay. That's and not then, bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Especially but, in LA. Um, but also she met Smudgy at, I call it puppy party. That's not what it is. It's the puppy socialization. But she met. Doggy Smudgy. dining. <laughs> she met Smudgy at puppy party where he is. Not at his best. <laughs> it's been uninvited from puppy party in the future. Um, <clears throat> it's not a scene. It's not everyone's scene. Um, but so she saw him kind of at his lowest low. So she called us when she arrived and was like, okay, our training starts now. Like how I arrive is really important because we don't want to freak him out. And Jeff and I were like, okay, like you're the expert. Sure. And so she's like, take Smudgy in the back room. And then one of you come meet me and help set up. Like she took treats and like set up a pile of treats next to her in our front area. And then a trail of treats from her all the way to the front door. And then from the front door into the living room. And so when we were ready, that way Smudgy could follow the treats and, and like not be freaked out, like hopefully have a positive experience. Smudgy isn't scared of people. Like he might bark. He's he's a sensitive fellow. But once you're in the house and we're like, this is our friend, he's like, it's nice to meet you. Like high five party. Like he's a sweet dog with people. He's not um, the same as he is at the puppy party. He's not the same. So she was like, point is, she like did all this and she's like, everyone. Did she have one of those suits on? <laughs> Basically. And like uh, those attack suits yes. that they wear. <laughs> yes. and, and, and like a beekeeper's helmet i don't know what she really did i was yes and <laughs> <laughs> i'm not used to having a yes and here i had jamie here all last week so and she was like talk with low voices and move slowly like it was all of this stuff i need you guys to get down on all fours we're right. all gonna, <laughs> and then she's like we're all gonna be quadrupeds together <laughs> and she's like okay when you're ready open the door and we'll see how he does and he like Ate the, he likes food. He ate the snacks and he walked up to her and was like, Hey, nice to meet you. Like, and she's like, Oh, that was, went much better than I thought it would. And I was like, Yeah, he's a good dog. We can't get him on a leash. Like, that is literally it. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I'm screaming. No, um, no, no, please. But then I don't she, have my, my headphones are not hooked up. I can't. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you haven't heard a word I your said. Lips, yeah. <laughs> or you have the captions on. Um, <laughs> and, then she came in and she is wonderful. <laughs> Shit sandwich. But <laughs> look, I know you well enough to know where you're going with this. So <laughs> let's just get there. She's she is an amazing person <laughs> with a great personality. Wow. What an eye color. Um <laughs> That is a reach. That is a reach. I know. That was the joke I was going for. He's a Gemini, <laughs> which I love. Um, she's very passionate about dogs and dog behavior, but in in a way that it was like, I, 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 I like I couldn't couldn't like rein her in. <laughs> yeah. And so, okay, like, I'll put it this way. The, I talked to my parents after the session. Well, oh, no, I'll, we'll tell the full story. So she's like, this is our first f official meeting. So it's really. You more almost did a flash forward, but now we're going to yeah. stay in linear yeah, time. We're, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> so she's like, it's really more an evaluation than like a full training session. And we're like, that's great. And we had to fill out like a long questionnaire to even sign up for this. And she had just like printed out 
our answers. And then one by one was like, okay, you said this. What do you mean? I was like, I meant that. Like, (laughs) um, you said he's a dog. What does that mean? (laughs) So, and because she's so passionate about dog behavior, like, (sighs) okay. We really just needed her for the leash stuff, but she's like, oh, like, how is he with noises? And we're like, oh, you know, he's sensitive to noise. And she's like, so that would like get us down this path of like, here are the 27 things that can cause that and what you can do about it. And, um, does he like yo-yos? <laughs> right? It was, it was because I could teach him to do rock the baby, but I can't do around the world. I can do one <laughs> or the other. It was wild. And then she was like, oh, I, I could teach him some tricks. And she, the trainer was like, wow, he learns tricks really fast. He's really smart. Like, and I was like, yeah, he's a really smart, good dog. Talk to Smudgy just holding out a deck of cards. <laughs> he does have a toy that's a deck of cards. I shit you not. I'll, I'll, <laughs> after, that could be part of my parting shots. But okay. um, anyway, it was, it was that day that was like the hottest it, it's been. It was a heat wave this week. We don't have full air conditioning. We have to close windows often because he's sensitive to sound. Right. So it was hot. I was starving. <laughs> and she's like talking about the history of dog behavior. And I was like, what is that? The thing is, people don't think about the fact they started as wolves. They was not domesticated until <laughs> later on in their journey through evolutionaries. Point is, oh, and we're all three wearing masks. And it's also just weird to have someone in our house. We haven't really... Hers is a Moomin Sean's mask. It's just like <laughs> rolls of toilet paper that she keeps pulling off. Um, and and uh, I don't know. It just. She wasn't great with time management is a diplomatic way of saying it. So and it's like four o'clock by the time she leaves. Well, I look and it's one forty five mm-hmm. and I'm like, I need to go back to work and eat something like my, right. I don't feel well. <laughs> like, Not in that order. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so we were, we're, and, and she's like, Oh, what time is it? And we tell her and, and she's like, Oh, I should go. And then I think I said, I was like, really, it was just the leash stuff, which we never got to. And she's like, Oh, do you want me to put him on a leash real quick? And both Jeff and I were like, yes. Cause that's what we want. But also I don't think we have time. And, um, and then at one point she's like, okay, just to wrap it up, I'm going to give you the names of some YouTube channels to watch of great dog trainers. And I was like, that is helpful. But she listed like 27. You're like, I know it's HTTP backslash backslash. <laughs> right. And then she Don't listed, put that part in. She listed books for us to read, which again, this is helpful stuff, but it also could have been an email she sends us a hand after out. she leaves. Um, and... And then one of, again, she's just like passionate. I was proud of us because one of them was like, this one's about like the history of each dog breed and it's fascinating. And she's like, did you know? And she starts, you could, Jeff and I could tell that it was going to be like a book report about this book when we, and we both went like, and she's like, you're right, you're right, you're right. (laughs) Like we just, we need you to get the fuck out of my house right now. I do. I get that feedback a lot. I do get that. (laughs) Yes, you're right. I should go. At a location, we could have like scooped left. a smudge yeah, and yeah. left. But like she had like a accoutrement she had to like pack up and um this is why I always break up with girlfriends in restaurants. Because of the pizza. Ah, smudge. <laughs> He's here now. Um, so it it was ultimately positive, and I do think we learned some good things from it. But like afterwards, my parents were like, So did she get him on a leash? I was like, it was two and a half hours and we didn't make it to the leash. Like we, you were supposed to do one thing. Well, we had a list of like four things that we really wanted to focus on with her. And again, those took us down windy paths. And it's like, in hindsight, I would have been like this one thing and we'll get to the other things right. when we can. Luckily, but, one of the things was the origin and history of Labrador. Right? So, like, what? 
is a dog? What is it? Um, and she's just like such a dog person that some of the tips she gave us, it's like she trains dogs 24-7. We do not. Like, and I don't know how we will incorporate that into our lives while also working and like so it's it it's a mixed bag. Like we're gonna take some and leave some. We've already discussed it as a family. And are you gonna work with her again? I think so. On and we will be like just the leash this time. Literally just the leash. Oh, yeah, like, no, 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 I get it. I get it. I, I we're just gonna do the leash. But well, I will hilarious. say, does Smudgy like to do stunts? <laughs> He does actually, but mm -hmm. um, it's funny that she's like smudgy, like he's easily distractible. And so we have to be like, Jamie, <laughs> her, that's her name. Jamie, no, leash, <laughs> You're like focus, snack, leash. Um, and we, we're parallel pathing it. We still have another trainer that we started with who referred us to this place with the puppy party. And we just went there this afternoon. And I, at first I was like, is it dumb that we're doing both of these? Is this a waste of money? It is not. I love her because she is very like, like down to earth. And we could say like, Jamie said this, but we don't know what oh, that means. Oh boy, Jamie. No. And she was like, okay, Jamie and I are going to see things a little bit differently. Um, and she's going to, cause the, the, where the split is, and I'm so scared to even talk about this cause I'm scared like dog people are going to write in and want me dead. But, um, Jamie and her, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a dog person. <laughs> their, their whole thing is positive reinforcement, which I love in theory, but that means you don't ever give any negative feedback mm -hmm. to the dog <laughs> and so there was like specific things like if he is jumping on me and starting to bite me like I literally was at a loss like what do I do <laughs> because it's good if you don't do this <laughs> right like because they're like you you reward them when they're not doing it so it's just like so we're just rewarding him a hundred percent of the time unless he's doing something bad like does I'm sure Hey, I see you're not biting anybody. Here's a treat. Here's a treat. Exactly. Here's a treat. Exactly. Here's a treat. Here's exactly. a treat. Here's a treat. And um anyway, talking to I'll just use their names because it's less complicated. Heather mm -hmm. is our Saturday trainer. She's like, here's the thing. I'm trained in positive reinforcement and I don't even know the name of it. And she's like, I use a balanced approach. I actually use a little bit of both. And she's like, real talk, the positive enforcement people get their dogs fully trained, but it takes a really fucking long time. Mm -hmm. She's like, it's not like, she's like, I'm not supposed to be saying this. <laughs> like, Cause it's like, I guess it's a new movement where you don't even like say no to dogs, which is insane. Like their mothers say no to them. Their mothers like bite them to tell them when they're crossing the line. Right. Like dogs, I'm talking well, about. Well, except recently I've heard that in the dog community, it's become less treating. and less acceptable to bite your children, you know? And they say that's been a long time coming, but, you know, it's finally here. And I'm not saying I will ever hit smudgy. That's not what I'm, I'm saying, like, using the word no. That was, like, controversial at this place. Right. And that's what I mean. Like, when we went to that puppy party, they were like, you know, stop him from growling, but don't correct him. And I'm like... I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. What are you talking about? Say the alphabet. Say the alphabet. <laughs> um, so this, and so I was, I was also talking to Heather, the, the trainer today about like, yeah, some of the techniques, I like the theory of them, but I'm not exactly sure how to apply them. And I feel like a riddle and she's like, because they are. And so anyway, I, I like that we're going to this trainer too because she's like grounded and it we might just be paying her for her to say like you guys are doing a fine job and mm -hmm. it's gonna be okay and that's 
we'll take it at this point. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and real talk, he is, he's gaining a lot of confidence. He picks up tricks really fast. He's going potty outside, like basically nice. 100% of the time. But I lived in this apartment for like a year before I started going potty outside. <laughs> but I mean, it sounds so silly, but that has tremendously improved our quality of life. Of course. Um, so he's just like a, he's a good dog who's really scared of leashes. I think for a while there, I was thinking he was like a bad fucked up dog. Mm-hmm. And it's it just even adjusting that thinking. It's like, he's scared of leashes and we'll, we'll get there, buddy. It's right. going to be a slow road, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, the, the. It's kind of like what I was saying about Hollywood. Mm. Slow road, but we'll get there. <laughs> right. So, we can bring. I mean, I don't know that we'll get there, but right. You know. <laughs> and he's um, not to talk about my dog every single episode constantly, but he's so funny when he's really tired. Like new things freak him out. So in front of our apartment building, there's like a garden area. Um, that- like a yard, like a lawn. No, like a garden area. Like, um, like a field? A, no, <laughs> like, like a lot of different pots of different kinds of beautiful tropical plants. Is like a bayou kind of place? No, actually like a garden. <laughs> and, and there's... Um, I, like, a, I, like a farming collective? Mm-mm, no, like, like exactly what I said. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. And it's it's weird. It's not it's very unique. It's yeah. not like most front areas of LA houses and I love it. It gives us some privacy and it mm-hmm. gives him a little tiny world to explore. And it's it's a beautiful garden that our upstairs neighbor takes care of like within it like he he's working on it every morning and mm-hmm. boy smudgy notices. <laughs> but um there's also like do dots. I don't know a better way of explaining it. Like do dots. Do dot do dads. Like oh do dads. Like, there's like like a like a like gugaws. <laughs> like a flamingo. Like a metal flamingo or like I like don't know knick- knickknacks. Yes, but like garden knickknacks. Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So there's in front of our neighbor's apartment, there's a ceramic frog that has like its mouth open. I think it's also a pot, like a a plant could go in its mouth, but right now it's empty Mm -hmm. and it's got these big eyes and it's been there forever. And Smudgy's just been like, cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Last night he was like, get that thing the fuck away from me. Like he was so scared of that frog and it was so funny. Anyway, that's the story. (laughs) (laughs) That's not where I thought you were going, but yes. Where did you think I was going? I don't know. I don't know. That was not what I expected. Why are you so upset? (laughs) I, I, I I just, I thought there was a different, anyway. Um, What did you think it was? I'm dying to know. No, I don't. I, I I don't know that I had a specific thing in mind, but so he was afraid of the frog. Mm. That's it. That's the story. Okay. But it's funny because it is not moved. It is it's the, the same frog. It's yeah. the same, and all like he had to like avoid it, and he had he was like his hackles were up. Mm-hmm. It's like stop looking at me. Right. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh smudgy oh, so what's smudgy. going on with you <laughs> um i'm trying to think of like what i don't have anything I, i'll tell you what i did the most this week was watch a show on the television called killing eve which has I been out for a while. Most of season one. And I, yeah, it was just one of those things where it hooked me and I just couldn't stop watching it. It's really know? good. Um, It's that Phoebe Waller bridge, you know, uh, although I will say couple. she wrote season one and then she left the show or I don't know if she wrote all of it, but she was the showrunner on season one and then she left the show. And so 
and I didn't realize that until I was like partway through season two. And I was like, you could tell there's something not still okay. Like I'm invested in the characters and everything, but it's just not the same. And then I was like, Oh, I get it. The voice matters. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there's absolutely nothing exciting about that, except that it took over my life for the entire week. The good thing about it is that when I'm doing that, I'm not like, watching fox news yeah bathing in horror the entire time That's i mean good. which is ironic i mean it is horror but it's fictional murders people <laughs> yeah. yeah i'd much rather watch that than the the real life horror that's on 100 um all right well, why don't we do this why don't we take a break and then we'll come back and we'll do parting shots sounds good um i'll pause it okay Hey, everybody, we're taking a little break. And while we're doing that, you are listening to some music right now, which I will let you know in the show notes what the name of the song is and who the artist is. Um, It's entirely possible, though I don't know because I'm not recording this over the music. I'm recording it separately. You don't need to know that. We don't need to get into the weeds about the process, but... It may be music that one of our listeners has submitted. And if you are a listener, which I assume you are, since you are at this moment listening, you might have something that you created, a song, a ditty, a ballad of some sort that you would like to submit to be played during our break. And if you do that, we will give you uh, full credit, maybe even on the show if I get better at this. And if not, at least it'll be on my website that no one goes to. Um, so send us, you know, an email and tell us that you want to submit something. Our email is mailbag at the longshotpodcast.com. And you can email us about other stuff, too. If you have, you know, a yodeling uh, uh, chorus that you want to submit or, you know, a whistling thing, anything you want. Uh, or if you have a question about something or anything you want to let us know, please feel free to do that as well. At that, again, it's mailbag at the longshotpodcast.com. So hit us up. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> we're back you are listening to the long shot it is a podcast i'm your host my name is sean conroy amber kenny is with me we've come to a segment on the show that we like to call parting shots i think that perhaps i'll go first today because some of what i have to say is a bit of a bummer Oh no. Yeah. Um well ultimately uh, yeah, it is. I don't know what else to say. Um before the pandemic or I shouldn't say before the pandemic, right at the start of the pandemic, literally within a week of all the lockdown stuff that happened. Um I had a friend who I was close with in college who unfortunately uh, took his own life, um, committed suicide. Uh, And it was, you know, shockingly unexpected. Um, And also because of the pandemic, it was just this weird thing where, it was it was hard to process in some ways you, you can't know? mourn together and that is a big part of- i think i think some people went even though perhaps they should not have mm-hmm. um went to the funeral uh you know i i, I know in fact that for example 
my parents went to oh, wow. the funeral. It was in New York. And, you know, f- f- just to, just to, there, there are very few people I went to college with that my parents would have been like, oh, we want to go to this person's funeral. And this was one of them. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> it was somebody that I had lived with in college for a while and really had lived with in one way or another all four years but all of us lived together in a house senior year. And so we were all sort of in touch over various uh, 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 mechanisms, you know, texting or uh, WhatsApp or whatever. But anyway, the, the reason I bring this up is because this week I got a call from a friend of mine that I went to college with, um, not somebody that we lived with. Uh, but like a good friend, you know, somebody, but somebody that I had not spoken with. This is what's weird about good friends from college is that at a certain point in life, you go, this is my good friend that I have not spoken with in three years. Right. You know, but once you do speak, it's well, and, and what had happened was one of the guys that we lived with uh, put together, you know, had all of us, there were 11 of us in the house, uh, uh, senior year. And he had all of us, the 10 of us write about our friend to give to the wife and kids of this guy. And oh my God, the wife and kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, and so we all wrote, you know, remembrances of our friend and, one of the things that I talked about in mine was how, even though he was in New York and I was in LA and we hadn't seen each other in a long time and whatever, every once in a while, he would make a point of, you know, he'd be on his way home from the city at like midnight or whatever. And he would just call me out of the blue every year or two, just to see what was going on. So he always tried to, he always tried to keep in touch in some way, you know? And so what had happened was another, the guy who had us all write this stuff, then sent us each copies of a bound book with all, with everybody's essays in it. And we all sent photos and it was really a lovely, a lovely thing um, with a lot of, you know, sentiment. Uh, so he'd sent it to all of us. And one of my friends had shown this book to this other friend of mine from college. And she had read the thing that I wrote in which I said that this guy made an effort to just call out of the blue. So she had been, she had read this a couple of days before, and she was just walking around her where she was living and she just took out her phone and like called me out of the blue because she was like, why don't any of us do that on a more regular basis? So of course, uh, you know, I, I keep my phone off all the time. So I did not realize that she had called an hour later. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I didn't have her number in my phone, but, uh, then I saw, and I called her back immediately and we talked for like, a long time about that and that stuff, but also many other things. And it was just a great conversation. And it was great to be back in touch with somebody that I hadn't spoken to. And to, like you said, it's not like no time has passed, but it was like our relationship has not changed in you're not starting back 35 at years, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like it was like, there is a deep and real affection there that has persisted over time and has not changed. And so as we started to talk, it was clear that that was unchanged, you know? And, you know, I, I don't know. It was, it was, it just was a very meaningful moment for me over the course of this last week, uh, to, you know, to, 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 to reconnect like that in in a way. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, like I said, it was a bit of a bummer because this is a sad thing that happened with my friend. Uh, 
but the flip side of it was, you know, here I was talking to this other friend for the first time in so long. Um, so I don't know what my, I don't know what my point of all that is, uh, except maybe call your people friends. should call people. Yeah. Yeah. Call your, call your friends. Uh, so I'm so my... sorry, Sean. I'm so sorry about your loss. Oh, thanks. I, mean, I know, I know it's, you know, like a year out now, but it's yeah. still really painful and ugh. it's, it, it's definitely a weird thing, you know, just to not have discussed or talked or any of it, you know? Um, and there was so much other stuff going on like right. immediately, you know? Um, right. And so much other loss and so much other pain uh, for so many people. Uh, so parting shots, parting shots. Uh, let's go next to, oh, here's one thing I will mention, which is, on that note, unfortunately, although not as directly personal, but I flipped on the TV today and I was watching for a few minutes the movie Funny People. Do you remember the movie Funny People at all? Yes, it was it's too the long. Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. Yes, it was very long. <laughs> it was relentlessly long. Um, like they almost had a movie and then they just kept going. Yeah. Uh, and it's about comedy, which is a hard thing to make a movie about. Mm-hmm. But people but are did, constantly trying. They did, Right. They did a decent job. Um but there's a scene at the very beginning that I had totally forgotten about. And it's the, I think it's the first time we see Adam Sandler's character, whose name is George. I don't remember what his last name is, but he's like, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but he's like a hugely successful comedian. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the first time we see him, he goes into a club and performs for the first time bumps uh goes on after jonah hill's character bumps seth rogan's character and that's their first interaction and he just eats shit horribly like is bombing so hard and then seth rogan has to go on after him and sort of try to like clean up yeah like what you know and so he does what you're supposed to do. He addresses the elephant in the room. Like here was this famous guy and he's talking about how his life sucks. And if his life sucks, what's my life? Like, and you know, all this stuff. But one of the things he says, and it really hit me like, as I was watching it, he goes, yeah, this is, this is horrible. Like I, you know, whatever, like watching George come out here like that. I don't know. You know, what's he. And then like somebody drops a glass and he goes, Oh yeah, George just shot himself in the face, folks. He he just shot himself. And, but then he goes, and up next, Robin Williams is going to come out here and slit his wrists. And that was in 2009. And uh, Robin Williams killed himself in 2014. Holy shit. And I just think it must have been weird to see something like that. I, I don't know. Like, I'm not, you know, obviously it, there's a lot going on there. Are you saying that it's um, directly resulted in his suicide? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Open an investigation. You know what's weird? He saw funny people and killed himself because of that movie, but it wasn't because of that reference. (laughs) He actually went to the movie. He just hated the movie that much. It's too long. (laughs) (laughs) It's too long. Oh god. Uh no, but I'm just saying, like, how weird would that be? I don't know. It just hit me like, wow, that's crazy. Like, because I guess the point of the joke in the movie was someone that definitely, this is never going to happen. Yeah. Oh, and then it's, you know, yeah. Oh, that's got a, there's a lot. Yeah. There. Here's somebody who would never in a million years kill themselves. Uh-huh. Five years later, kills himself. That's crazy. Because of the movie being too long. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's start that rumor uh all right amber parting shots yeah um it's so interesting i this wasn't going to be my parting shot but you've inspired me and it's um it's it, it's it was really an intense summer last summer i don't know if you remember it I don't remember um, it's all a blur because i was just in my apartment by myself for the last 15 months you know but um, there's a pandemic. Oh, Black Lives Matter. 
there were fires. I believe the fires had started already. And then um, the day that George Floyd was murdered, um, my friend Richard Bain killed himself. And um, so it, and it was hard for exactly what you were saying before. It's like your, your instinct is to come together as a community and, um, and you just can't do that. I think some people did. And we went to one vigil and that this was so from, strange. It, from college? Um, he's a, a comedian in LA. Um, and he, and I, I wasn't even that close with him, but he, it, it, it was a punch in the gut when I heard that. And he's, he's like really close friends with some of my close friends. So um, it's also about how it affected them. Um, And so we went to one vigil and that was so strange because it was outside a bar that he liked and height, height. I mean, all of 2020 was the height, but this was the first time Jeff and I had like seen other people yeah. besides like grocery store. And it was in this setting. And it was like, we were like excited to see each other, but then it it was bizarre. It was bizarre because it was like not a happy occasion. So it was just, and we're all wearing masks. So it's like, it was, it was strange. Um, and to your point before, there was so much going on. Like it was like hard to know (laughs) what to be the most upset about. Like it was, it felt like we were stretched too thin. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's not something that I've talked about a lot. And, uh, it was a, it was a fucking intense summer. It was, it was a summer of like, like it felt like a bad joke. Cause you're like, things can't, possibly get worse and they just kept doubling down and and it also scared me that um he was like the life of the party he was the guy who like he made you i think everyone felt this way but i'll use i statements like we weren't the best of friends but like if we if he saw me at a party it was like he lit up he 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 was very present with me and he made me feel wanted there and, and, and loved. And, um, and he was so funny and so gregarious and all of this. And, um, it was hard not to get scared that it's just like all of my friends who are, don't have an outlet right now. I mean, comedy, everyone's a little bit on the edge. Sociopathic. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to be just like locked in their apartments Like, I was scared that we were going to have a whole slew of that. I I don't know. Yeah. It it, it was scary and sad. And I'm I'm hesitant to even say that because I know um, of, like, anti-masker, anti-COVID people who kind of used, like, but mental health is just as important as an excuse. And I... I struggle with that because I agree. I think that mental health is like a real deal thing. And I think there's like, there were, and there are plenty of very lonely, sad people who don't, the community that they did have that was kind of holding them together, they didn't have anymore. And that's real deal, a tragedy. Like it's horrific but I still think the pandemic's real and that we have to take it seriously. So it's like, I, I held both thoughts at the same time because a loss of life for COVID or for a mental health issue, like equally tragic. I don't want either. Two things can be true at once. Right. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I, I, it certainly all of this has made me realize how for me and I'll use me statements. Um, me was very dependent (laughs) cookie monster over here, but I mean, my social life was basically completely revolved around comedy. 
mm-hmm. you know, around the people that I would see at shows. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like I was going to game night once a week. Or, you didn't have like a conscious like no. club. No. For um, checkers or something. Like that. And that's gone. That is gone. Right. You know, and it may come back. I don't know. And if it does come back, it'll be different. But, but are you going to be more aware in your like have a social, a conscious social? This is what I wanted to bring up is I'm Puppy having party. game night tomorrow night. <laughs> Will you guys be there? <laughs> um, I, I don't know, but I do think it's something to think about. You know, I do think it's something to be aware of. And the other thing I was going to say off what you're saying is I, I'm sure. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know this for a fact, but I bet there are some people who, you know, take their own life that people are like, oh, that makes sense. That that totally makes sense. But you're saying this about your friend. And this is exactly what my friend and I were talking about the other night was like, of all the people we could think mm-hmm. of that would ever do something like this, Robin this was Williams. one of the, not, no, I'm not talking about Robin Williams. No, yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know. Yeah. I, yeah. I was making it right. No, no, no. Same thing. Yeah. Like, like, of course he would never do that. You know, if you had to rank in order, all the people mm-hmm. we knew he would be way at the bottom of the list. Right. And the point being, as you don't my know, friend said, what do we really know about what's going on inside people's head? Nothing. Nothing. And like what their mental health is at any given time. It, there's just no way to really know. And I do think that, I mean, as you know, I'm 100% on board with all the lockdowns and the masking and all of that. And I think it was very poorly handled and a lot of people died. I do think that there is an accounting that needs to be done for whose responsibility a lot of that was. And I have a pretty clear idea of whose responsibility it was. But we are now seeing the mental health results of that. Mm -hmm. When we talked about this a few weeks ago with all the incidents of violence on planes, I saw a stat the other day that said there have been, I don't know, 2,900 incidents on planes since New Year's and 2,200 of them were related to people not wearing masks, not wanting to wear masks. And, you know, I also... I also mentioned a couple of weeks ago, if you remember the thing about how I was sucked into a wormhole on YouTube of watching like little league fights and stuff. And literally just a couple of days ago, I saw a video from a T-ball game, like five-year-olds, not even like 12 adults yeah. got into a brawl because they, this? yes, <laughs> there's, a, there's an ambulance outside. <laughs> Close the window. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know what you do. The way to stop noise. Yeah, you just don't. Anytime an ambulance isn't there, you give them a treat. Don't say no. (laughs) Uh, But I think this shit is going to go on for a while of like. No, we we need like counseling, like for the entire population. On top of which, and again, this is theoretical, but I think there's truth to it. You know, I read an article that somebody linked to, and it's just, it's, it's not even an article. It was just like a glorified blog post or whatever, but I think there's truth to it that the political climate in this country has given permission to the psychopaths among Mm. us to be psychopaths. You know, like it's right. okay Before now. They were to be shamed. Ang- yeah, it's okay to be angry and get in people's faces because mm-hmm. fuck them. You know, you're a freedom fighter or something. Like it's don't tread on me. Yeah. What's that? What's that flag called? The the the. There's a name for that flag, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's going to be a huge issue for a long time. Um, it's gotten. Worse than uh, whatever. I'm going to go on one of my fucking news rants again. So I'm going to stop myself. Um, on a, a lighter note. Yeah. Let's get just, off the just suicide. To, thing. Just to have like a, cause mm-hmm. I really didn't intend to do that. It just was so similar to, and right. I don't know. Um, you said that Smudgy should learn a card trick. Well, he has a deck of cards. <laughs> Isn't that cute? 
and you hide a what? treat in this one. So uh-huh. he always picks the right card. Pick what a card, it? any card. What, what, why is oh, that the right card? Because there's it's it's a magic set. It came from a magic set. And so like you put a treat in there and it's like he's a magician and he always picks the right card. It's a it's a joke. It's not it's not really the right card. Uh-huh. But this one has a poop on it. This one has a fire hydrant. This one has a stick and this one has a squirrel. And yes, I'm playing with it. You can have it back. Just be careful if he starts trying to say, I want to do the trick where I saw a woman in half. <laughs> he has a snake that he cuts in half. <laughs> it's a full. Watch your ass. Um, Jane, and you do know Jane. And if you say otherwise, I will lose my mind. Um, gave him a bark box gift. One month bark box. And it was. The, they come in a theme and so the that theme, were like you get a hatchet one month and then the next month you get cologne and then the next month <laughs> yes okay yes. um the theme was magic so that's why he's got a top hat with a little oh, rabbit in I it see. and he's got yeah, the cards yeah. and he's got a snake that you cut in half like that's funny it's pretty cute and, oh, oh, so and the snake really is a magic trick yeah 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 oh. and and there's um like it's an oversized I think it's like a rope toy, but it looks like a, a watch. Like you are getting very sleepy and there is um, a bird, like a dove that disappears. Like you could turn it inside out and it's just, so it, it's cute, but yeah, he's a little magician. <laughs> uh, him and Doug Henning. Uh, all right. Well, any other, any other parting shots? No, I'm I'm sure there's more to talk about, but we will talk again next week. Oh, we certainly will. We certainly it's a threat. will. Threat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to find out what my my moon and ri- sun sunrise my sunrise your, sun, sunrise your, sunset. Your sun, your moon, and Is your right. Is this the little girl I carried? That's an <laughs> astrological song. <laughs> I would love to know what your sun, moon, and rising is. Well, we can sun, talk we about know, next. right? Cancer. Yeah. You're okay, a so moon, moon, <laughs> bad. What's my bad moon on the rise? Uh huh. Um, you know, you could look it up. It's pretty easy. There's there's free places. You just have to put in all of your personal information. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the things in Killing Eve. Was all about this guy who got rich by stealing everybody's personal information. Um, folks, this has been the long shot. Call a friend. Phone a friend Mm. and let them know that you're thinking about them. And uh, we'll see you next time on The Long Shot. Bye. Reputation I struggle to uphold. You're a penny on the ground, but you're a deer in the road. You're a lover, a lever, a third time deceiver. I used to know better. could take to the edges or learn how to steal but i don't want to be here that long and then maybe it seems like i'm asking myself for my own spare change but whether or not you're a snake in the grass all the bad times will come and the good ones